Hi, this is Garrett Wong, and I played Ensign Kim on Star Trek Voyager, and you're listening to Neil Before Pod. Neil Before Blog presents... Neil Before Pod. Hello and welcome to our festive edition of Neil Before Pod, the podcast that can deliver listening pleasure in just one night. I'm your host Santa Craig and as a festive treat to all you listeners, I'm here to lead a discussion on a film I have a lot of time for. It's the Christmas zombie musical Anna and the Apocalypse. Joining me in singing and dancing their way through the end of the world, we have Andrew. Hello there. And Chris. Hello. Welcome to the musical end of the world. Yes, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it, it's a, it's a lively and joyful and, and and yet terrific and terrifying at the same time. I'm doing jazz hands. You just can't see. <laughs> I'm doing jazz hands. Um, well, fair enough. I'm not doing jazz hands. I'm doing this, what I always do: sitting down. I feel like if the world ends, I will meet it sitting down. Yeah. Yep, yep, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, all because if, you, if you're going to go, then you get, you, then you, you're going to, you're going to go comfortable. He died as he lived, lazily. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there, there's worse epitaphs. <laughs> there really is. Yeah, there's better, but there's worse. And he'll be around to tell it anyway. Right. So before we get to our main topic, we'll use our go back to our main feature. The Neil Before Rise Against feature. So I'm going to nominate Andrew and go first with a Neil Before. What are you kneeling before? Okay, well, well I am I am uh, kneeling before the the recently released trailer for uh, for for a film called Brightburn. Oh damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm actually, I've got an alternative if you if I no, switch. No, no, go on. Go on. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, this is a hor- a horror movie, the trailer for which has cu- has cu- has cut it to mirror uh, as, as, as closely as possible all of the iconic iconic imagery for the origin of Superman. Although once we once we get past that, then then it may, made apparent that instead of of a shining beacon of all the all the goodness of humanity, uh, like uh, th- this this particular uh, uh, Nathan superhero is growing up to be Damien from the Omen. <laughs> It basically seems like it's 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 going to be a, a supervillain slasher movie because all of the shots from it are are exactly exactly the kind that you like like you would expect from from films like that. In uh, even uh, even 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 down to 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 the to the appearance of of the, of the kid himself, the cowl that he that he has for that he has for himself, which which which, which a normal comic book character uh, character would would just would just ha- would just have. A, have to disguise their identity. Uh, yeah, but, but, uh, this one actually uh, lo- lo- looks uh, looks like looks like the, the mask of a slash movie killer, uh, like Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees. And and I think uh, fusing like those t- those two kind of, two kinds of Im- imagery imagery together is a fantastic idea. And I'm kind of quite surprised it's something I'd, I've I've never actually seen before. And yeah, you know, yeah, and and the, like the film itself looks looks like it's, it's going to be brilliant, and I'm pretty looking forward to it. Yeah, I saw the trailer yesterday, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of it. I think it's a great idea. Uh, we've had kind of riffs on the, the Superman origin thing before. Um, Unbreakable is in itself a riff on Superman in some ways, as in you know the the marketing for that film should have been what if Superman didn't know he was Superman, um, and I guess Hancock is a bit like that as well. What if Superman didn't care about helping people? You know. So now you've got what if Superman was demonic, and it's um, it's an interesting premise. I really like how the trailer starts off as if it could be a Superman movie. You've got the oh, we want a child. It's really horrible that we can't have a child. The you know the, the crash landing, and then suddenly it just becomes much more sinister. I really like the was it the red eyes as he's like floating outside the window and stuff like that. Looks, it does look cool. It's really interesting. Chris, have you seen this? I have seen the trailer. Um, yeah, I, do you know what? It looks like an interesting, an interesting take on it. Um, horror movies are never really my thing. 
Uh, but giving it the superhero origin bit might totally tempt me into it a little bit. So, yeah. I tend not? to be one for the prestige horror movies. You know, the ones that everyone's talking about. Um, Elevated horror movies. It's, 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 or it still goes like the, hmm. the, the utterly pretentious tag that they're being given. <laughs> I'm not going to get started on this because I will not stop, so please carry on. <laughs> you know, the, the things like um, Hereditary, which I hated, uh, or The Quiet Place, which I loved. Uh, stuff like that, you know, I'll, I'll maybe make time to see a couple of them a year um, if everybody's kind of chatting about them. But on the whole, I'll, I'll tend to dodge them because, well, Andrew, you'll know better than anyone how repetitive they can get. All too well, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I used to have a friend who would go and see all the crappy horror movies, and it's just, as far as I could tell, he was just watching the same thing over and over again. Well, that has has always been one of the one of the issues of of horror in general. It is that it's very very easy to do it very very badly. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. But though. Yeah. But though. Though. though I think the the one one of the reasons why why the genre in in general get uh, uh, ha, ha, has has a has a particularly neg- negative reputation is. Um. Is 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 because of 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 all, all of the all of the in, inter, interminable franchises, you know, like, you know, like uh, like Friday Thirteenth or Halloween or Night, Nightmare on Elm Street and, and, and the like. Um, it, it's because like uh, they 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 are they are 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 what are what people uh, what what people's people's perception of of the of the entire genre is is actually like. Yeah. Um. Because actually, uh, fairly, fairly recently, I, um, I, I, I actually had to, I, I had, I had to, I had to uh, explain to a, a woman I worked with, um, like, like the, the difference between, uh, like, uh, between like a general horror movie and a slasher movie, because because she because she genuinely didn't know what the, what the difference was. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose that's quite common. Yeah, bright burn here for it. Is it out March or something? Uh, something like that. I forgot to notice. Yeah. Also, uh, got to mention the rather big from the director of Guardians of the Galaxy, producer James Gunn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh no, uh, no, it's even more than that. All over it. Yes, it's actually like from the visionary director yeah. of Guardians of the Galaxy, which was just a gigantic middle finger to, <laughs> to, to Disney. I'm always, um, I'm always sceptical when you use the word visionary because. People use that in, to reference J.J. Abrams. Yeah. It's a, it's a word that's overused these days. It's lost all meaning. What, what, what's that, uh, visionary podcaster Craig McKenzie? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am a visionary. I can see I have vision. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brightburn, excellent choice. I think we're all intrigued. So... That shall be one that I sit and watch in a few months, weeks, years, whenever it comes out. Chris, would you like to go next? Sure. Um, I'm going to go with another little teaser trailery thing that made me chuckle uh, earlier in the week. Uh, so there was a new trailer for Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Uh, they're going to be going into their new season premiere in January, so we got a first little teaser trailer, and it was just a bit of a, a die-hard rip-off kind of thing that they did. Uh, which was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a little short thing, and I was like, ah, do you know what? Kind of made me laugh. So, is yeah. this the post revival saved from yeah season? post? Uh, yeah, this is the well. You asked for it, so here it comes. Uh, season uh, that they're now going to get with no holds barred. So yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's just a fun thing. It's it's not any sort of clips of the show. It's like a little standalone skit thing that they've done. So I was like, yeah, kind of like that. I'm waiting for the most recent season to come on Netflix, which it hasn't done yet. Yeah, I don't know whether that's a rights kind of thing with it all shuffling over or, or what. I heard it was supposed to be this December, but... Ooh. don't know. Could Early be. Christmas present, nice. Yeah. Um, I'll watch it eventually, once I catch up with the previous season. I'm aware I could watch it through other means, but I can't be bothered. Yeah. Uh, I, and I don't know what those other means are, and you can't make me say. I won't try. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I just find it. I find Brooklyn Nine Nine a bit of a palate cleanser for me. <laughs> it's like uh, uh, other people sort of uh, look down on it, but with me, palate cleanser, just like it. <laughs> yeah, a good chuckle and a laugh. So. Yeah. 
Uh, are you excited about Brooklyn Nine Nine returning, Andrew? I am. Yes, I I absolutely love the show. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's just it's it's just uh, so uh, so 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 much fun. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and and I and I, I do I do I do really like ensemble comedies in in general. I, 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 and and especially 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 in in the, in the case of this one when uh, if, uh, when 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 they when uh, when they they take full advantage of 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 the uh, d- diff- different different combinations of character interactions that they can have. Um. Yeah. Yeah. And and this uh, this uh, particular uh, teaser thing, I I I also uh, really really enjoyed it because. Yeah, because yeah, because much like the show itself, it was it was it was, it was just a, a just a, a great bit of fun. Um, especially since it's it's, play, it's, play, it's playing on the fact that like the, um, that uh, a running uh, a running thing throughout throughout the show is just how how much Jake absolutely adores Die Hard, and so having ha, ha, having a trailer. Be, uh, Basically, being 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 him describing and and and, pl- and, and pl- playing out his his like his ultimate ultimate police officer fantasy, it, it, it just thought was a perfect bit of characterization. Cool. Yeah, I'll see it eventually. Don't know when, but eventually. Um, so now it's my turn, and uh, since you stole mine, ha I have a couple options. Um, Although what I'm going to do is I'm just going to like, I'm just going to mess with everybody and I'm going to kneel before the, the Taron Ezer and Robin Hood film because you know someone has to give it some love. It's getting critically and universally panned across the board. I didn't think it was that bad. I enjoyed it. It's not a good film, but it's it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. It's you know it's fine. It's kind of hilarious and how stupid it is, and I could get something out of it for that reason. I have not seen it yet. I've got to say the fact that it has been getting universally panned, apart from one voice screaming amongst the crowd saying, "Go along and see it. It's fun." Um, <laughs> so I've I've not had the chance to see it yet, but it kind of looked like it would be a bit of fun to me. Though I know I'm probably going to miss it at cinemas now by the time I actually get round to seeing it. Oh, it's gone. Oh, it's gone already. All right, there we go. It's gone. Yeah. No chance, McCrell. You're you're too late. It's like Arrow, but not so good in whatever time period it's set in. (laughs) I I actually have seen it. Um, Although I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't enjoy it as as much as you did. Um, uh, Anybody did. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just I think like uh, with um uh, with uh, with very with very uh, very 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 well known stories, um like I, uh, I, yeah and and with and with Robin Hood in in, in particular, and it can, it can be very difficult to, to actually do anything different with them. It's like uh, just just because just because there have been so many different variations on it, on it, on it previously. Yeah, and the filmmakers here just didn't even try. You have to admire that. <laughs> do I, though? Well, to some degree. They're just like, you know what, we can't do anything new, so let's just churn something out, it's fine. Um, yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. A superhero, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, 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 the thing is, but if, 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 that, if that's the attitude you'd like to, to take towards it, then you have to ask, like, why bother doing it in the first place? Because money. I don't know. I, I can't defend it. I really can't defend it, even though I'm defending it. I just thought it was all right. Sometimes I'm a bit of a sucker for films that are just so hilariously bad. The Meg, for example, I quite enjoyed it. Skyscraper, decent. You know, I, sometimes I just like to sit and let something wash over me. And that's what happened here. It didn't outstay its welcome for me. It's about two hours long. I was, I was never bored. Uh, there's a hilarious moment where, spoilers, Jamie Foxx decides to make himself a metal arm and he, st- <laughs> and he sticks his hand in the, the metal stump while it's still boiling hot. And then he, you know, screams because Molly thought, what do you think was going to happen? It's to show that he's tough, but it's just stupid. And there's so many other stupid things that happen in the film. It's just, yeah, I'm going to kneel before it because why not? Well, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, someone had to. 
it's uh, it holds up with my theory. Uh, the <laughs> the worst film ever made is someone's favorite film. I mean, I'm not saying this is my favorite film, but you know, I didn't hate it, which is, I guess, the best that the filmmakers can hope for in this instance. Yeah, yeah, well, I've certainly uh, yet to meet the person who would cite Birdemic as their favourite film. They'll be out there. Guaranteed. If you're out there, make yourself known. We won't judge. Oh, I will. I will judge you. I will judge you hard. I won't. I've publicly admitted I enjoyed the Robin Hood film, so, you know. It's out there now. Unless I edit it out, which I might. (laughs) (laughs) So that's it. Nail before. Locked in time to rise against stuff. So, Andrew, you went first before, you go first again. What what of mine are you going to steal this? Well, I know I won't be stealing from you because I know you've not watched it yet. Um, I I am rising against Titans. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, if um, if any of the the listeners uh, recall uh, uh, recall the the podcast that, uh, that, that we did uh, about all of, all the trailers trailers coming out of San Diego San Diego Comic Con, um, you may you may recall that that I I was the lone dissenting voice in um in um in saying that 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 Titans uh, didn't actually look all that bad and and actually and and, and, and actually uh, might might uh, might have been a decent watch and might have been kind of fun. Dear God, I was so wrong. And in a later podcast, he offered to review it. <laughs> I did, and I... It's... I, I, I would say I've come to regret this, um, but... I, I, but yes, but I... If, if in future, I may not be so... so, uh, so may, not, may not be so quick to offer my, offer my services uh, as, uh, before properly experiencing something. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, but... Uh, well, the first episode, the first episode of it was was actually all right, and it and it set it set everything up quite well, and yeah, we have with like introducing introducing the like the characters and establishing the tone and and the world and whatnot, and and then afterwards it just all went to hell. Yes, and like like the 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 episodes are are pretty, are pretty much alternating uh, between ones which. Uh, 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 which are carrying forward the actual narrative of the series, and and ones which are side stories, um, having very very little very little to do with the overall plot, and uh, whose, whose purpose is is just to to introduce other characters who may may or may not ha- have their own series in the future. That in, in, in of itself is is, is annoying enough, but. But the the main problem with the series is it's just so interminably boring. <laughs> I mean, every episode has uh, um, has about about ten minutes of actual plot, and and the rest is is just filler material and stretching this out to, like to, to to an acceptable runtime. And. Yeah, I, I guess, and it's get, and it's getting it's getting to the point where where I'm actually, or I'm just wanting it to end, so so I just don't have to watch the freaking thing anymore. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, not watched it yet, as you know, because you said that. Uh, though you can catch Andrew's coverage on dealbeforeblog.co.uk. His frustrated coverage. Hey, Chris, have you seen Titans yet? I've not seen it yet either. It is on the list, but I, every time I speak to Andrew, it moves steadily <laughs> down that list to the point where I think eventually it'll just topple off the end and one of these days I'll end up accidentally watching an episode. <laughs> and it'll be episode like three or something. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be halfway through or it'll be a season finale and I'll be like, oh, right, okay. Oh, so that's a thing that I don't need to watch anymore. Of. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so yeah, that's it on Titans. Chris, what's your rise against uh, I am rising against the fact that Doctor Who won't be back until 2020, which was announced this week. There's yeah, one it's... episode in 2019. On the one day. episode, one <laughs> episode, yeah, on, on day one. And uh, yeah, and that's it, it's not going to be back until 2020, which I think is a bit of a shame. I've been uh, quite enjoying the few episodes that I've watched, so um, yeah. I was kind of disappointed in last night's finale, but that's a review that you can read. Um, See all the self advertising I'm doing. I'm, I'm getting good at this. Doing well, plug mongus. <laughs> That's it. So uh, that that doesn't mean I've not been disappointed in the series on the whole. Though I've enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I think that they're the BBC are a bit cavalier in how they market this. Sometimes you know it's like 
yeah, we're just going to take a year off. It's like, well, that's that's enough time for the kids that you've got on board this year to forget about it. So, great. Well done. You know, if you want to kill it, then this, you're going the right way about it. Yeah, it is, a, it is a bit of a long gap, especially when it's not really like a, a production gap of sorts. But my guessing is that it's to give the actors space to do other projects. Yeah. It might be so that they can attract people that they want onto it, so they can go, right, okay, well, you'll still have time to do your own thing because you're going to get another, you know, half a year worth to do a film or do two films or do another TV show or, you know, whatever you want. Or present a quiz show with the case. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can present the chase, you're fine. <laughs> I think that um, they should follow the American CW model of 23 episodes, the first eight of which set up a villain that you won't see again for another 10 episodes and then rush to the end. Because <laughs> we all know that works really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just it's a tried and tested effort. Yeah, 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 well, it, will, it must work well because they keep on doing it. <laughs> it's because we keep watching it. Damn us! Yeah, yeah. Well, well yeah, I've actually, I've actually been, been quite, been quite enjoying this, this series of Doctor Who. Um, yeah, yeah. The, 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 I, the, I, oh, I've, I've not, I've not, I've not watched the, the finale episode yet. Uh, yeah, the, 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 well, I, I must have, I must have not, uh, paid enough attention at some point because I didn't realise it was it was actually going going to be the be the finale because it really didn't seem like there had been enough episodes for it to have been the whole proper series yet. Well, it's a ten episode season and every episode has nothing to do with the previous one, so it's, it, it doesn't feel like it's going anywhere, and the finale doesn't feel like it's come from anywhere either. I mean, I don't think that's a spoiler to say that. But, um, so it just kind of feels like another episode. Albeit with slightly larger stakes than the previous one, you know, but um, it's it's a weird structure. I think we've just gotten so used to the oh my god, the Daleks are wiping out the universe again. (laughs) (laughs) Damn Daleks, taking twelve episodes of casually hinting at them. (laughs) They only tried that once. I'm I'm kind of exaggerating somewhat, but you know, the every finale, certainly under the Russell T Davies era, was very much this. Everything's going to going going to hell in a handbasket, and we can't. And there's no way the Doctor will win. And then Stephen Moffat specialised in the "what the hell is going on" sort of finales, or sort of episodes, I guess, during his run. So it's unusual um, to have this structure after having a kind of a defined, almost a, you know, I'm going to say almost American style structure in, in some ways. You know, where the finale is something that you're building towards. But they weren't this year. And I guess you can take it. Yeah, yeah, though. Oh, I suppose may, uh, maybe that was intentional. Uh, yeah, just, uh, uh, seeing, seeing as seeing uh, as that, uh, that 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 was largely how Doctor Who, Doctor Who was um, in, in in its original incarnation. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, because. Cause, because yeah, it, it was something something that you'd, you'd you'd be able to dip dip in, 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 in and out of in. Yeah, and if you hadn't if you hadn't seen every, everything previously, then it really wouldn't matter because you, you'd always be able to follow what was going on. To an extent, yeah, I think um, TV has moved on, though. True. That should be recognised. But this is more a conversation for the Doctor Who podcast that we'll do sometime after the, um, the New Year special. So we'll table it until then, uh, before we turn this into the Doctor Who podcast. Is, as it's a time travel podcast, is, are you talking about the podcast that we recorded in the past but will be putting out on the stream in the future, or the one that we're recording in the future that we're then going to put on the podcast in the past? You decide. Ah, right, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's relative. It's open to interpretation. What is time, really? Oh, running jokes. <laughs> never, never get old. Well, I know, I know what it is. I think it's time we got to our main topic. Oh, oh, because I haven't wrote oh, yes. anything. Yet. Oh right, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I couldn't resist that that uh, that connection. Well, do you know if if you edit my one to be after yours, then you could have that connection <laughs> no, no, if you want. <laughs> I want to retain the clumsiness. <laughs> uh, I'm going to rise against something that's super recent today, as as in when we recorded it. That bloody Sonic poster. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know, whoever released a motion poster for the, the upcoming 
in brackets, live action Sonic the Hedgehog movie, which is a silhouette of him looking kind of muscular. It looks it looks trash, and um, you know I'm, I'm not sure this film is going to be worth a damn. Uh, if if judging by the previous output from Sonic stuff, it will be glitchy and it won't work half the time. So you'll be sitting in the cinema and it'll just switch itself off for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> just... Yeah, um, I don't have much more to say about it. It's just a poster, but it looks terrible. From the producer of The Fast and the Furious. Yeah, I exactly. know! Yeah, all of the posters, <laughs> yeah. My God. Yeah. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, well, well, perhaps they, they were they were trying trying to trying to go for some thematic connection of, of speed. Yeah, and then failed miserably. Yeah, but don't worry, you can see Jim Carrey and Matthew, no, James Marsden, not Matthew Marsden. That's a different guy. Yeah, it's James Marsden. And, I don't know. It's going to be like the Smurfs with Sonic, and I don't think anybody needs to see that. Yeah, well, 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 I actually heard heard it heard it heard it described it as as uh, like Alvin and Chipmunks with Sonic, which actually sounds even worse. worse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's getting it's just getting worse. I was being generous. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Yeah, maybe it'll be maybe it'll round out as a solid Garfield. <laughs> it, it kind of reeks of one of those. We've got this property and we're doing absolutely nothing with it. Yeah. In the film slash TV market, let's go and do a thing, and yeah, yeah. I'm sure it'll be commented on when the first trailer releases. The thing is, I love Sonic. I always have. You know, it was my favourite game growing up, and I have an affection for the the poor blue hedge, hedgehog who can't appear, seem to be in a decent game these days, unless it's Sonic Mania, which is incredible. So why don't instead of releasing a Sonic movie, why not just release a let's play of Sonic Mania at the cinemas? It'd be more enjoyable. I guarantee it. Not me playing it. I am not very good at it. But, um, someone who's good at it. Yeah, well, yeah, well, well, yeah, well, yeah, well actually, like the the most recent uh, Sonic, Sonic game that I um, I ever played uh, was um, was was Sonic and Knuckles, which was like some so like sometime in the late nineties. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah, so uh, let's play Sonic Mania would, would be a completely new experience for me. So I would totally see that. Yeah, I mean you can see it now. It's on YouTube, but like on the big screen. Why not? In three D. Mm, maybe not. <coughs> no, it's a two D sprite game. You know, it doesn't need to be in three D. All right. Yeah. Uh, so that's that. So now it's actually time to get on our main topic, which doesn't work as a link anymore. Okay, so recently we saw a unique film. I mean, I say recently. I recently rewatched. I saw it months ago at the film festival and loved it. It is a Christmas zombie musical. You heard that right. And it's called Anna and the Apocalypse. And it's about a girl called Anna who lives through the apocalypse. And she sings. Is that a fair description? Do we want to do a spoiler claxon before we say she lives through the apocalypse? <laughs> that wouldn't be much of, I mean, be much of a film if she died in the first five minutes, would it? I mean, uh, no, no, I wouldn't at all. You're right. Yeah. Is that a fair description? Would you say? Uh, I think it would be my my only addition would be Scottish zombie apocalypse Christmas musical. Yeah, but it's, not, I mean, it's, it's kind of filmed with Scott, uh, Scottish director and so on, but it's not really set in Scotland. No, it doesn't specifically say it apart from accent wise, but yeah. Yeah, well, well and, uh, and I, I would, I would also, I would uh, also, um, also, uh, also, uh, also add comedy to, to to the list of adjectives to, for the film. Yes, it is very funny. So, in our usual tradition, we shall start with no spoilers, because this film that you probably can't watch by the time I publish this <laughs> deserves not to be spoiled. Um, Andrew, you can start. What do you think of it? Yeah, well, I absolutely loved it. it, it yeah, I, 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 th- I thought it, w- it was, it was really, really good fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, and 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 
as you mentioned, it, it was um, it, it was it was it was it was it was screened at, at the at the Edinburgh Film Festival in and every other film festival you can think of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes, so, yeah, yes, so, so, and and there and there 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 were there were quite a lot, quite a lot of good films at at, at, at this year's festival. But, but uh, this 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 was this was uh, certainly w- w- certainly one one of my favourites. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's just because I I loved I loved like I loved like the the uh, the mixing together of uh, the. the very various different genres, yeah, yeah, and and I, and I, I thought I thought the and uh, I thought the the end result of of doing so was absolutely brilliant, and as uh, and I would certainly recommend the film to anyone who can still find the bloody thing anywhere. Yep, DVD release next year is probably your best bet because they'll try and churn it out sometime around November, I think, of next year. That'd be my guess. I think it's one of those ones that'll end up becoming, uh, in, in local cinemas, one of those uh, Christmas staples. Oh, yeah. Cult you know, where you get the diehard... Yeah, you get the diehard screening, you get the Muppets Christmas Carol screening, and I think Anna and the Apocalypse is going to end up on that list somewhere. Yeah. And it should. And, and rightly so, yeah. Yeah. So, you're a fan, then? Oh yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I I just found it a lot of fun. It um, I've said on podcasts before. In fact, I think I've said on this podcast, horror and zombie horror and stuff like that isn't particularly my thing. Uh, but the likes of Shaun of the Dead and stuff, I'm all for. And this just reeks of that kind of stuff. Plus added musical. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm right up for it. Yep, I thoroughly enjoyed it as well. Uh, in case that wasn't clear, I have loads of pictures with the cast from when I was drunk at the, the film festival um, I did karaoke near them they recognised me the next day for doing karaoke I did tell them I was available for their next film was met with resounding <laughs> sort of reactions which fair enough they can sing, I can't but you know loved it, thought it was a great film I'm sad to see how Badly, it's been butchered in the marketing. Uh, well, I mean, it's been well marketed on social media, but I think cinemas have done it a real disservice. It should have been there. You know, every cinema chain, every kind of every cinema chain that's anywhere should have been promoting the hell out of this thing uh, instead of rege- relegating it to one screening a day late on at night. No, I agree. It's not been particularly well, and I. I I thought it would have got more of a, a play from audiences uh, or cinemas here as well. As much as you're sort of saying, oh, it's filmed as a generic thing, it's very much, I always feel it's kind of quite a Scottish film as well. So it would have been nice for it to get a bit of an extra plug here. I know that doesn't make a difference to anyone listening to this in America or over <laughs> Canada or somewhere, but yeah, I've, I think it was a bit disappointing the amount of screenings it got, though by the sounds of it, it's actually done very well in the screenings that it did have, so that's, that's something good to take from it. I think it's one of those ones that once it's out on DVD and gets sort of played on telly and stuff, it will get discovered properly. Yeah, there's there, there's been a big uh, a bump of it in America as well. Um, lots of there's been lots of screenings in the US according to social media. So you know, it's it's getting out there. It's just. It's just the fact that cinemas aren't championing it. Instead, they're showing multiple screenings of that stupid Fantastic Beast film, which is, you know, not worthy of screening at all because it's so bad. I should have rose against it, but you know, if it'd been a week ago, it probably would have been risen against. But you know, I'm saying it now; it sucks. So, yeah, I, can, I concur. Yeah, just kick that out of the screening, one of their screens, and then put it the Anna in a bit more. Why not? Give the little guy a chance. But yeah, it's what it is. But this podcast and its listeners, plural, will know. Will know. So, on that note, shall we dance our way into the spoiler section? Let's go for it. Yeah, well, yeah, well uh, just give a second. I need to stretch first. <laughs> So this next part would normally be our Q&A section, but I don't have any questions from anyone, probably because no one's seen the film. 
So we'll skip that because we can't do it if we don't have any questions. Unless either of you have found a question in the last five or so minutes. Um, um, well, I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I didn't think to, to throw it out in desperation. I apologise. I have failed. You have failed. It will be reflected in your end of year performance review. I hang my head in shame. <laughs> uh, Chris, you got any questions? In the last no. No. Cool. Okay. Let's move on then. So, you've already hinted, Andrew, that it combines different genres, and that can be a bit of a risk for, you know, for films in general because, well, genres are can be quite distinct from one another, and usually adding musical to anything. It's fairly difficult, but I think that this film blends the elements so seamlessly that it all feels like a cohesive whole. So, you know, it takes the zombie horror part seriously, it takes the the comedy part seriously, it takes the musical part seriously, it takes the character drama part seriously, and because it does all those things, uh, it puts the effort into all of those things, it largely works. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I, 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 I completely agree with that. Yeah, though, even though I'm effectively repeating you, kind of agreeing with me earlier. Um, well, uh, as, the, as the extension of of what, of what I mentioned earlier about uh, about it being quite easy to do horror, horror badly. Um, yeah, well, well, it's it's, it's all it's uh, also also the a, a, a similar a similar deal with co- with comedy horror. Uh, yeah, because because uh, so so often it's uh, the people making the making the film ha- ha- struggle to get to get the the balance be- between them right. Uh, yes, yes, so yes, yes, so so, so I can have I on on one on for one moment I can have, have this like a like completely harmless like a look, look, look about humor and it's and, and next you you have uh, uh, pe- people. People uh, uh, d- d- dying horrifically, yeah, and yeah, and the, and the co- the contrast between them, um, yeah, uh, uh, re- uh, re- really, really, uh, really doesn't work. Yeah, though, yeah, though, though, though with with the the way the Anna does it is that at, at any any given moment, like right, there. Uh, I, uh, each each one, each one of its uh, different genre aspects, like is is at like like a like a, a, a particular kind of level, if if, if you like. It's, um, yeah, so, so if you like, if you like, imagine if you imagine 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 like the scale of the, the scale of each like as, as, a, as a bunch of, as a bunch of dials that are that are being, being constantly adjusted depending on on the on the need, the needs of each scene. And yeah, uh, yes, and and the way that each that each of them is balanced. I, I, I think it's pretty much flawless. Yeah, absolutely. I would I would agree with you, but I would just be repeating myself. <laughs> yes, we just end up in a, in a, in a never-ending loop. We're just stuck in this time loop. Of just yes, I agree, and then we never get past it. Yes, and I agree with you agreeing with me agreeing with you. And I agree with you both agreeing with each other. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Chris, are you echoing that statement? Yeah, bad. yeah, pretty much. I, I don't want to go over again. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, and the thing is, I mean, obviously there's been a, a little bit of money spent on it. You know, the the zombie makeup is is very good. Um, they they look like zombies, and and kind of uh, well put together zombies. But there's also the kind of you know, when, when you watch enough films, you start to see where they're kind of hiding their budgetary restrictions. So you have a lot of these fairly simple locations. Um, there aren't actually a lot of zombies for the most part. Normally they're fighting a handful of them. You know, or the, the engagement, they'll split them up into sort of sections, like the Christmas tree storage area. Um, it's more about the zombies you don't see than the zombies you do see, which makes it more effective. And you know, it's it's almost Evil Dead in that respect, isn't it? You know, the um, let's hide our limitations by turning them into strengths a little bit. I mean, I'm not saying it does it as well as Evil Dead, but but that that influence is there. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of it was sort of shot on location. It was um, I was reading a thing earlier this week because I was trying to work out where in where through the West it was shot, and it was this a school through at Port Glasgow that was about to be demolished that they used. 
right. so it was all like it was all sort of proper sets and buildings and stuff so they managed to sort of use that as a bit of a budget saver i think mm. it's they've managed to do some good stuff with it um it's one of those sort of silly ones that it's like you do when you see something that's set in Scotland, you end up sort of hunting about going, I'm sure I've seen that building, that building, and that building somewhere. Where was it? And they start Googling, so that's what I did. Sorry, I'm sad. <laughs> um, it's, uh, but yeah, it was... I, there, there are some budget savings there, but I think with the style of film it is, with the comedy angle, with the sort of musical angle, I think if you went too high budget i know this is going to sound weird but i think if you went too high budget with it it wouldn't be as much fun i don't know if you agree with that or not but i think if if this was like some ridiculous la la land style production it wouldn't have the same charm that this does yeah i would i'd agree yeah i think um yeah i think it, it part of it is that it's really clever in the way that it, it presents itself you know it's you've got these You've got a handful of set pieces, you've got a handful of locations, um, a small group of characters, and, you know, you can chuck them all in the mixing bowl and what do you get? And you get this film. I, I, I completely agree agree with, 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 with what you're saying about, um, uh, about how, how it's been styled. As I actually, uh, I got, I got a chance to, 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 inter- to interview the, the, the director of the film, uh, a, 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 a guy called, uh, John McPhail. Was, uh, show notes. <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, yes. And one of the one of the th- things that he um, that, 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 uh, that he mentioned w- um, was being a big fan um, of, pra- of of practical effects um, o- over uh, over CGI. And though there there is a, a, there is a bit of CGI in in, in, in the film, but like that um, that's that is, is quite quite readily ident- identifiable. Um, it, it's it's, it's mostly- the matte paintings, basically, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. yeah, and the and like the occasional fountain of blood, that yeah. kind of like spurting out of a, 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 a de- decapitated zombie. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but for 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 the most part, the CGI is just used to to uh, to augment what's all, what's all already there. Yeah, I do agree with him like, in terms of, in terms of using practical effects because I do feel that that it, it can make a, a film kind of, kind of uh, feel just uh, uh, kind of like more more real and like and like more 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 tangible. Um. Yeah, just just like it's like when you when you know when you know that the what's on on screen is is actually there physically. Yeah. And, partic- and particularly for um for lo- for lower budget films like they don't have like don't have like the kind of Hollywood financing uh, f- 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 flying at them. Uh, when you're able to like to to, to make to to make that 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 kind of connection with them, then it does it does allow you to over overlook uh any 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 um any minor flaws that they, they might you might pick up on yeah and I mean it affectionately wears its influences on its sleeve doesn't it I mean, I've mentioned that Evil Dead whether it was intentional or not but uh, the obviously intentional one is Shaun of the Dead you know you've got that mm. well, it's, I'm going to say it's a similar sequence I mean it's not similar at all when you look at them both side by side but it's the idea of um, when, when Anna's walking at school the world is ending behind her. There's all this chaos, and she just doesn't notice. In the same way that Sean doesn't notice when he pops out to the shops, and it's—I mean, I guess it's that. I suppose it's an exaggeration of the Sean of the Dead sequence because in that one, it's you know the the town is just so full of people that are um, effectively dead to the world most of the time anyway. <laughs> that if they were all zombies, you wouldn't actually notice. Whereas. This is to the extreme. You know, there's chaos going on. It's more like um, the remake of Dawn of the Dead uh, in terms of what's actually happening. But she still doesn't notice, which I guess is a comment on... um, I mean, maybe a comment on how young people are just so blasé about the world around them. Which doesn't seem fair, according to Anna, because she's actually quite a smart person. So head headphones on and completely oblivious to the world around. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's just a fun sequence, that isn't it? It's the, yeah. pa- the pair of them sort of heading their way into into meet and ignoring everything that's going on around. Um, yeah, very smart. Yeah, 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 well, the, the 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 way the way that I took that was 
it was it was, it was like it was like it was it was it was less to do with like any, any kind of social commentary and yeah and and just more just 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 more being like like a uh, 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 juxtaposition of oh I I got of like all 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 this all this all of all this death and carnage that, that like that's rolling around them while at the same time like they're feel like feeling like really like, really happy and optimistic about about the future yeah. Yeah and yeah, yes, and, and, remain, and remaining completely oblivious about about about, about uh, probably living hell that, that they're about to endure. <laughs> yeah, there is that. Um, there, although there's kind of a few references to um, society not deserving to survive throughout the film. <laughs> you know, you've got the hashtag evaxit <laughs> not Twitter um, <laughs> thing that they've got. You know, the legally distinct from Twitter thing that they've got. And it's like we don't we deserve to die or whatever it is that um, I forget the character's name off the top of my head. Whatever it is that she says, Steph. Steph, that's it. Yeah. So I think there there will be an intention of you know yeah maybe there is a, a disconnect that suggests that people might not deserve to thrive, which is you know a very nihilistic sort of outlook. But I cannot. But then I, I walk outside and I understand it immediately. <laughs> that took a morbid turn. <laughs> the end of that sequence, though, the um, zombie snowman. Oh, <laughs> zombie snowman was great. One of my, brilliant. my favorite things. I'm the decapitation. <laughs> whack! 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Smacked in the handbag and then finally taken out by the seesaw um, was yeah. Yeah. And there's there's one of your practical uh, blood fountains. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Andrew. Yep. Yeah. 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 yeah actually, uh, uh, that that was pretty much exactly what, what what I was picturing while I was saying that. <laughs> of course. Well, yeah. It's uh, it's quite a prominent and quite a memorable image. It's just the, this blood spurting out of this decapitated zombie as uh, John looks on and screams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then. It counters your theory, Chris, about the show me this severed head because it continues going on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Zom- zombies kind of don't count. I mean, it's yeah. I, my my general rule of thumb is once there's a decapitated head, I know they're properly dead. Uh, whereas other shows, it's like uh, until I see the decapitated corpse, I do not believe they're actually gone. <laughs> uh, with this, yeah, the yeah, zombie zombie films and TV shows normally break the rule all the time with that. But yeah, you get the gnashing of teeth from inside the head. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just. With the Christmas setting, um, I think it's just one of these things that makes it even more fun. Um, the the snowman is probably my favourite. However, the two zombie penguins later, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, equally equally cheer me up. <laughs> zombie penguins, the, that Christmassy image, penguins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's. So it's those kind of little encounters that you, you're talking about that are kind of the most memorable because the well there are a bunch of kids so these kind of all out zombie brawls they're very much a well they're a losing battle aren't they because they're just completely outmatched but when they're sort of one on one you can get quite creative in the way that you defeat them such as decapitating with a seesaw um, you, you get uh, stabbed out by a candy cane as uh, candy obviously cane, yeah. <laughs> or or uh, uh, cr- cr- crush it, crushing your skull between bowling balls. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was pretty brutal. Um, the bowling ball, the, the bowling alley sequence was pretty cool actually. Uh, I can't think I've ever seen anything like it. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, that was definitely definitely one of my favourite scenes throughout the whole film. Yeah, it was just yeah, it was just madness, absolute madness. Uh, but, but really cool and it's at that point where you're sort of starved for a bit of action as well because you've had a lot of the sitting around introspective character stuff and it's like right, it's about time let's, <laughs> you know, let's uh, speed things up a little bit and of course it's a zombie stag do so you know <laughs> that's always fun which again would you notice <laughs> I'm, I'm being very uh, very cruel to the human race this evening yeah, we've we've seen the news today at the time of recording, and we're not feeling very uh, we're not we're not feeling very great towards society at the moment. We apologise. A zombie apocalypse sounds pretty good right now. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that until the internet went down. It's yeah, like you can't watch no. Elseworlds. 
The internet would be one of the first things to go as well. Yeah, it would be, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Although not in this film. It stays on for a while. So that they can watch cameos by Jackie Bird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and 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 there's and there's about about, about a dozen listeners who who like, who will know who that is. I was about to say, yeah, <laughs> it's like for for a Scottish crowd, they're going yay. For everyone else, are going oh, who's this? Who, who have they got in for attending to be a newsreader? <laughs> Hold on, there's a dozen listeners. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being optimistic. <laughs> that, it's about time someone was. Uh, it's kind of the, the characters. So you've got Anna, of course, as a protagonist. Uh, the film is named after her, after all. Played by Ella Hunt. And I think she's a great character because she is very much this... I mean, every character is somewhat lost uh, in their own way. But her in particular, you know, she has these kind of... She has these feelings that she has something better to do with her time. You know, she's she has to get out of the town because it's suffocating her. Uh, her mum died, so she wants to experience as much about life as she can she's booked a ticket to somewhere uh, to go travelling because she wants to experience the world and before university and all this stuff and like you know get the impression that she's kind of figuring out her place in the world and, and what it means to her and I think that works really well because it's, you know of all the things holding her back a zombie apocalypse is pretty high on that list uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 to, I, to, I totally agree with that. Um, yeah, yeah, just like so does Ella Hunt, by the way, according <laughs> to a tweet I got back during the film festival. Just saying. God, 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 like, 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 you, you're, you're full of self-promotion tonight, aren't you? Well, it's. I, I was quite chuffed with that. Uh, with that tweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 that, that is actually a, 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 a pretty good thing. So, so a nice one. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah, so yeah, 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 and and, cer- and certainly like the 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 idea of um of um of, fe- of feeling stifled by uh but from from gr- from growing up in in a, in a small town is um is is something uh, is uh, something something that uh, that quite a lot, quite a lot of people will, uh, will, something that quite a lot of people will be able to relate to. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, because it's like, is because yeah, I actually, actually, I uh, grew, uh, grew, uh, grew, grew up, grew up in the, in the borders. Um, yeah, yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, so, 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 so spending a majority of, of your of your life not wanting to live where where you, where you live is some, something that something that I, I I I know I know all, all too well. Um, yeah, and. Yeah, 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 and especially, especially in 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 Anna's case, like, yeah, yeah, there's there there's what there's what there's what she wants from life, but yeah, 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 but 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 she also also be be made like to to take into consideration what what her what her dad what. The, uh, what's from what's for her, and and, and, what, and, what, and what he th- and what he thinks is going to be going to be, be be the best for her, um, which is yeah, yeah, we, 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 yeah, which is a uh, which which isn't isn't something that, that she that, like that, that she that she feels feels the same about uh, yeah, and and which again I, I think I think is I think is something that many young 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 people would would feel the same about. Yeah, and. I mean, not just young people, because obviously it's the very specific example of I'm in a dead end town where there's you know no prospects. If I want to make something of myself, I have to get out of here. But you can transpose that to anyone who feels like they're stuck in a rut in anything. You know, you you might be in a, a relationship that's not fulfilling you. You might be in a job that you hate that you can't get out of because financial commitments and all that kind of stuff. Not not necessarily. Saying that's me, but you know, my <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, a lot of people kind of feel like that. You know, how many times have you kind of woke up in the morning and been like, "Oh God, not another day." And <laughs> that, that's Anna. You know, that's that's what her life is at this point, uh, and that's why she's taking steps to get out of it because she has to for her own sense of sanity. And 
She doesn't want to end up like her mum, I guess. Or her dad. She doesn't want to become her dad, who just gives up and lives, you know, resigns himself to where he is. Doesn't want to end up like her mum as in dead and not accomplished anything. But, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah. You know, you see the dad getting basically trodden on by the headmaster and sort of fought really lowly of through the thing. So you can see why she'd be wanting to try and find a way to, to break out from that. Yeah. And the fact that her dad's a janitor as well, you know, I think that's no accident because, I mean, it's a noble profession. I wouldn't want to do it. You know, um, I, th- I think I'd be terrible at it. But, you know, it's, it's something that needs done. But if you look at society, it's one of those things that's generally seen as you haven't achieved anything so you can be a janitor, you know. Um, and I think that's a a really bleak outlook because a lot of people will enjoy their life when, when they do that sort of work but it's the idea that the headmaster's an educator so automatically feels like he's better and well he's not a better person he might be better paid but he's not a better person whereas um, her dad is a better person you know he's a, he's a kind and generous sort of guy everyone agrees with me good <laughs> <laughs> I agree Yes, I'm not so going to fall out with janitors. I agree with you. Yeah, let's not fall um, out with janitors. Yeah. People <laughs> might be listening to this podcast while doing janitorial work. You know? yeah. Um, yeah. But I think I hope you see what I'm getting at. As in, it's one of those occupations that might be seen as being low order when it's when it's not. I mean, there's no such thing as a um, you know, there's no such thing really. It's just small people that, that think that. Uh, that think that certain things are beneath them, but you know, people are willing to muck in and literally, and and you know do what needs to be done uh, in order to support themselves, support them fa- their family, you know have a life of some sort. So um, the fact that he is very much that working class type, and uh, I think Anna sort of looks down on it to an extent, at least until she comes to some form of understanding of what he's like and mm. you know everything he's done for. Her. Yeah, well, 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 I, I don't, I don't, I don't think she, she necessar- necessarily looks down on it. I think, I think it, it, it's more that, like that she, she sees it, it, in her, in her dad's, like, like a, a direction that she doesn't want her life to go in. Yeah. Yeah, and and she's, yeah, and, and yes, and the and the plans and the plans that she's that she's making are geared towards avoiding that. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, she doesn't want to end up like that. And that's completely valid, but I think she does have to come to some form of appreciation of what her dad has achieved as well. You know, he he may not have achieved money or well, he may not have achieved wealth or anything or success or anything like that. But what he has achieved is being a decent person, which is important. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so other characters. You've got John. He's pining after Anna, who's his best friend. Um, his main arc is trying to learn all of Rudolph, uh, or Santa's reindeer names. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's after. That's what his goal in life is. And he likes cutting about in a horrendous Christmas jumper. Two or three days on the trot. Hey, it's got lights in it. It's a pretty cool Christmas jumper. It's That's, that is the Rolls Royce of Christmas jumpers. Yeah, it's that is. truly horrendous. Truly, truly horrendous. Yeah, yeah. Well, well. I, I, I took the I, the idea of that uh, just, uh, just, just to be to emphasise how, um, how, how sweet nature to is. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's he's quite a nerd as well. You know, where uh, he walks into the bowling alley and he speaks to Chris, and it's like zombies. And he's like, no, oh, it's so exciting. It's like uh, people are dead. <laughs> like <laughs> the world is collapsing in on itself, and you're like. Yeah, but zombies. <laughs> For a second. Yeah, no such thing. Apparently, there is such a thing. Yeah. Um, struggling to think of anything else there is to John. I mean, I think he compliments Anna really well because he acts as a sounding board for her uh, to speak about. And I think that the idea that you know they don't get together in the midst of the apocalypse is is very real as well. And I think we'll get onto that a bit when we talk about the songs. But um, it is it is very real. It's you know the the fact is that Anna sees him as a friend and nothing else and you get that point where she 
makes it very clear to him that he's her best friend. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's I mean, not made maliciously, it's just meant as that's what you are, like, that's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, because, like, there's, there's even, there's even, uh, even, uh, a uh, line in, in one of the early songs, actually, like, explicitly stating, like, sometimes nice, like, sometimes nice guys don't get the girl. Yeah. Uh, and in real life, most of the time, I suppose, uh, it just depends, it depends on the girl, depends on the guy, I don't know, um, it is, bubbles along in the background and I'm glad the film doesn't make too big a deal out of it and it gets to the point where she makes it clear to him that, that she knows he has feelings for her and she kind of puts the boot in that sorry, mm-hmm. ain't gonna happen but you're my best friend and then he dies So you you get that nice heart to heart chat before that though where it's the, the where they're pushing each other along in the shopping trolley and you kind of get that nice That's chat That's what I'm talking about Yeah, uh, yeah. It's a, a cracking scene that one, and I did like that because I think that's where you get the best sort of revelation between the pair of them. Because then they swap places. You can only talk when you're pushing the trolley. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, "Well, you don't fancy me, so get out of the bloody trolley. I'm gonna sit in here." <laughs> yeah, it's like the talking stick, but it's a trolley. Uh, and there's the snow angels seen earlier in the film, which is ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But all right, it's not bad. Um, where he talks about all over the other reindeer, all over the reindeer, yeah. Instead of all of the other, it's it, it's not funny, but it's kind of funny. Oliver's a dick, as he says, because he laughs and calls Rudolph names. <laughs> um. Anything else on John? I think we pretty much covered all, all there is to him. Yeah, he dies. Has to wear that. Christmas jumper until his body decomposes. That's a shame. I mean, imagine it's it's like June and he's still cutting about as a zombie wearing a Christmas jumper. Isn't he going to look stupid? I suppose no stupider than that Santa. Yeah, the, the, he, him and the snowman can be a sort of double act walking about <laughs> together. They could. It would be him, uh, the snowman, and uh, two penguins. The two penguins, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so Steph, the character I couldn't remember, uh, she is. She's kind of been abandoned at Christmas, which is kind of harsh. Her parents don't want her to go see them for some reason, and her girlfriend is away. So you know she's a, um, she's a lesbian. The film makes nothing out of it really, other than just mentioning that that's what she is, that she has a girlfriend. So you know that's that's progressive. Uh, you, you have gay characters in this film without any fanfare which is funny for a musical yeah, she's just sort of a, like a, a young activist kind of thing isn't she Steph um, they, they don't really make much of about her um, not my favourite character for the film I've got to say she's a bit of a killjoy yeah it's just a bit a little bit just a little bit but you know they they use that sort of throughout the film and it can be it can be quite interesting but it's a sort of strangely unexplained character in there certain death is so much fun they just want to kill zombies stop like bringing the moon down <laughs> <laughs> i think uh, that was part part of her purpose uh, was it just like to 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 provide to provide like a a, a, a contrast uh, I get uh, I get against like the sort of un- un- like the potentially fatal enthusiasm like the the uh, the, like the, the, the other the other characters were were, were taking it all as yeah because yeah, because 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 uh, because in 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 zombie movies like like the, the, the they're they're pretty much always always is one one character who 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 assigns himself like the 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 role out of the voice of reason. Yeah, yes, and yes, and and the one and the one that that other that other that other other people should listen to. Um, <coughs> yeah, yeah, but here as well, well, well uh, yes, and yeah, and 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 I think and I think in in the in the in the case of Steph, like like she she may have, she may have well have actually been right since she she's one one of the few people who make it make it makes it out alive. 
Though it's arguably her fault that uh, Chris and Lisa died. That is true. Because she picks up an item, a confiscated item, shall we say, and uh, makes too much noise and alerts the zombies. Because of her reaction to said item. I mean, I would be disgusted too, but it's done. Yeah, and and I I do I do know that the the, the girl who played Steph Sarah, Sarah Suara she was also the film's uh, the film's choreographer and uh, and I think I think it's, it's possible it's possible that uh, that there there may have also also been like a, a character created for, for for her to for her to play as as well um because she just like to, to 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 give to give her to give some some more to do and give her more, more presence in the, in the production. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just, just randomly speculating. I'm not. I'm not, um, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. I, 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 either either way, what, what happened there? Yeah, um, could be. I mean, she is the. She stands out because she's very different to everyone else. Um, I think she's maybe a bit too obviously different. You know, she has the the platinum blonde hair and her activism streak. I'm going to spend my Christmas Eve in the soup kitchen because that's who I am, you know, that kind of thing. Um, um, yeah, 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 and, and, and she, she's, also, she's also Canadian. Yes, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, she's alright. Uh, Chris, uh, not you, Chris, the other Chris. Oh, Chris, Hello. Chris again. <laughs> Hello. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's the frustrating optimist isn't he like um who sort of deserved to be killed earlier than he, he did because he goes back <laughs> to his phone um there's also the bit where where anna and john walk into the uh the bowling alley and he's like it's them they're fine <laughs> it just runs at them <laughs> and without having any idea of what's going on uh, uh, uh yeah yeah actually the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's like a, a, another another uh, zombie zombie movie staple is is like a, a character who is completely and utterly gormless. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, and 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 usually uh, usually ends ends up ends up getting getting themselves and or other, other people killed. Um, yeah, yeah, the yeah, the yeah, though. Yeah, but though though it is though it it, it is more more it is more more typical uh, for for that for that character to be to to be a woman, um, yeah, and as and I, yeah, it is, it is, and uh, yeah, and and and, and so, so I, I found I found uh, I found it, I found it quite quite an, an interesting contrast, like to 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 how to have a guy be, be, being being a bit of an airhead for a change. Yeah, though him and Lisa are not a couple you want to be around, are they? I mean, Jesus. We've all been around couples like that, and it's like, yep, yeah, us. <laughs> Just want to spray water stupid. on them. <laughs> Please get that out of my face. It's lunchtime. I'm trying to eat. <laughs> um, yeah, they're, they're quite insufferable in that regard, although I think they only have, what, one or two scenes together? Because they have the lunch scene, and then they have the scene just before they die, and that's it. I think so, yeah. Yeah. So you know they're not that insufferable. They they get separated, thankfully. Um, I don't know. Chris is the the nerd, the same as John is. Uh, they sit around discussing their what's happening to their celebrities, which I thought was quite funny. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. is surrounded by models, and electric fences uh, whether Ryan Gosling's a zombie or not he's still cool apparently and uh, Taylor Swift does not become a zombie according to their gospel so yeah <laughs> I'm sure there was another celebrity mentioned Justin Bieber that was it he's a zombie would you notice <laughs> you know that's that's the theme of this this uh, podcast would you notice yeah, well, it uh, uh, might make him less irritating. A little bit. Unless he could still sing. <laughs> nah, yeah, no. Let's not go there. Uh, I don't think there's that much to say about Lisa as well. I guess she's quite kind-hearted by nature. She spent most of the film sitting with Chrissy's gran. 
waiting for it to die, basically. Which is morbid. Um, she does have quite a... We'll get onto it when we talk about the songs, but she has quite a... <laughs> 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 oh, God, she does, yes. So that's it for Chris and Lisa. Anything else? Mm-hmm. No, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, because that's, that's that's one of the things where we we have uh, uh, characters who are who are defined uh, defined by, by by being a couple. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yes, 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 so uh, anything anything that they can say about them, like like is like is it's pretty much pretty much pretty much the same because because yeah. yeah, it refers to them as being a couple. Yeah. So you have your kind of jock, douchey character in Nick um, although there's a little bit of depth to him you know, he's, he's quite sensitive under his rough, rough exterior uh, something about his dad he kill, well, he has to kill his dad, but then there's some kind of there, there's something underlying in that relationship maybe it's that his dad expects him to join the military, maybe that his dad doesn't want him to join the military, you don't find out, but you know that there's something there because Anna talks about them confessing something about their dads when they shared a night of passion that turned her into the subject of gossip at school. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I would, I would, have liked to, uh, to, to, to have had a few, a few more, a few more, a few more moments or a, a bit, a bit of dialogue, which, uh, which could could have instilled. A, a bit more sympathy towards Nick. It's, it's because it's, it's like in 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 general, I uh, I I I, f- I, f- um, I find arrogance like to to be a really really I- irritating character trait, like uh, like in in fiction and and in and in real life. Yeah. And when I encounter like people like people uh, people who who dis- who display that as a dominant personality trait, I just have a tendency to. Completely disregard and and ignore them because I, yeah, yeah, yeah because I just because I just because I just find them too obnoxious to pay attention to. Um, That's fair. Yeah, 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 and yeah, and I feel, I feel that 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 if if Nick were, were somebody who we were, um, who who, who we were who were supposed to to ultimately sympathise with, that that then that, I think it wouldn't have hurt to have to have been given a couple more reasons. To, to, to actually do so. Yeah, he is a dick throughout most of the film, um, whether it be to Anna or to anyone else. Um, and then you sort of get that sense of redemption towards the end, and, and and or not redemption, but that kind of sense of some kind of depth to him that that he keeps hidden. And he is the typical, you know, he's. I guess he bullies others because he's so emotionally damaged himself. That's what they're getting at there, more or less. Yeah, it's sort of he's being uh, pushed and pulled in other directions, and is kind of acting as he he thinks people expect him to act. Yeah. Um, and then playing to character after that. But yeah, it's that arrogance kind of thing. You go. Oh. Not really. It's it's that bit, but you do get a little bit of an insight into the character. But I kind of agree with you, Andrew. There could have been a bit more there. Yeah, although Ben Wiggins is really charismatic. Mm. You know. He's, yeah, yeah, definitely. He is fun to watch, for sure. Um, so that's our main cast. We have the villain, Arthur Savage. Um, Appropriately named. I know. Yeah, and. Mm. I, I do, I do watch, like the appropriate naming in this film, actually. I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at least with him. I mean, no one else is really appropriately named. So. Uh, oh, the town is called Little Haven as well, yeah. which is... Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so... Um, when I first saw the film, I felt like he was kind of at odds with the overall tone. And I'll stand by that because I wrote it at the time and I meant it at the time. But watching it again, he actually blended in well for me because something about him didn't occur to me at, uh, at the point, first point I watched it that occurred to me recently was the idea that he is, he's always been like that. He's like, you know, he's a, a savage being forced to act civilised by a society that has these rules. So once that all breaks down, he gets to become who he really is. 
which is just a, a murdering, gleeful scumbag. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he he was he was quite a lot of a lot of fun to watch. Just I, I just 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 because just because he, he he's he's just so he's just so completely completely unapologetic in in, in his behaviour and and how 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 he how he acts to, to, towards towards everyone else. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah, 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 and 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 I've, I've, and I, I think, oh, yeah, well, and and it's and it's, it's it's made it's made it's made fairly fairly clear early early on that he's uh, he's some he's somebody who 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 has a, a certain degree of thwarted ambition in his life, and feels that he should have more authority o- over people. He actually he's utterly 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 revels in the in the. Um, in 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 the happening because it, it then it then allows him to like to uh, to 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 live out the, the, like this this this, uh, this fantasy of of of, contr- of control that he's always always had. Yeah, and you get that in a lot of uh, like post apocalyptic films where people just well I don't have to live by society's rules anymore so I just get to do whatever I want and he's one of those people. <laughs> um, you can sort of understand why he would feel like that. I mean, um, when everything's falling apart, might as well, a- at least to some degree. Whereas other people try to retain their humanity, care about other people. He doesn't. He doesn't even care about himself, really. You know, he, he stays in a town full of zombies, so he can't care that much about himself. Yeah, so he's got the limited control within the school, hasn't he? And then yeah. it just his his power hungriness just goes nuts from there. Yeah, that that control which he loses as soon as he lets the zombies hmm. chow down on the people. So, but he wants to keep uh, Anna's father prisoner because I don't know, because the film needs him to. I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all that, all that, and, and it was also because uh, because Anna's dad like was was the only one who who, who really stood up stood up stood up to him. Yeah. And yes, I'm, I'm, I'm actually like directly directly telling him is like 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 no no like, like like what you're doing is a really bad idea. Like we need to do this instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah and the thing is, and and in in in, in his tiny petty little mind, uh, it, the, and and he decided that uh, that, that was a, a transgression that needed to be punished. Yep, completely agree there. Um, so that's Arthur, scumbag. Kind of lovable scumbag, I suppose. But yeah, it, it, that's a kind of interestingly during the hundredth podcast it talk, we talked about has your opinion of a film changed um, since you reviewed it, and that's one, I guess. I mean, that's an opinion of a part of the film mm-hmm. it's changed in, in the time since I've seen it. So you know, but what I wrote first time is perfectly valid because it is my reaction first time. So yeah, um, he was entertaining. Uh, I think uh, I think what I found standoffish was how much he hams it up compared to the rest of the cast. <laughs> you know, everyone else plays it kind of straight, but he is just a lunatic. He, he just goes he just goes for full on villainy, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Once he gets there, so it it does seem Shoot different, especially is especially when you're going sort of between a, a song. A big cheery song, and then as soon as he walks in, <laughs> it sort of drops a little bit. Yeah. Um, so what about some of the deaths? Um, so several of the characters die. Uh, the first major death is John, um, which is well, I don't know about halfway through the film, something like that. He's the first major character to die, and then you get Chris and Lisa later on. Uh, think they're effective? Do you think they feel earned? Do you think they feel shocking? Um. Yeah. Well. All. all I. All. I was. I was certainly, certainly uh, quite surprised by uh, how how early John was killed. Um. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Just just because just uh, because with being Anna's best friend, then uh, he's someone like someone there to provide like like, like like emotional support to her. Given the prominence of of him in the in the early part of the film, then yes, you certainly would certainly would have thought that like that they, they, he he would have been around around for for, for a lot longer. Which makes it more shocking, I suppose. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 
Mm. Yeah, and 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 also the the flip side of that is is that is that if if somebody who you had assumed would, would survive for, for quite some time is is killed is killed off so quickly, uh, the, uh, then there then there certainly isn't any any reason um, why any other character who you think is going to survive isn't going to. Yeah. And and so and so uh, that that provides like a, a degree of uns- uncertainty in 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 the, in the character's fate, which. Um, which 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 I I, I I for one actually found, found quite welcome, um, uh, because uh, so often in 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 in, in films like these, um, I, I after after like about, about fifteen or twenty minutes, like, then you can you can actually list the order that the characters are going are going to die in, yeah. like with yeah. the, almost practically one hundred percent accuracy every single time. Yeah. Although the, the interesting thing about John is he could be seen as one of the things that's holding Anna back. Because it's established early on, he doesn't have that much ambition. You know, he's just he's happy to just kind of languish in in this small town, and he acknowledges that she's going to bugger off and have a really successful life, presumably. Uh, but he doesn't really exhibit any of that, any of those desires himself. Mm-hmm. So you know, the I mean, the two influences in Anna's life that are potentially holding her back are John and her father. So they both die. So she has nothing tethering her to that town anymore. So she leaves. I mean, she leaves because it's like crawling with zombies. But you know, on that, on that, underneath the surface level, you've got that. These two people that are keeping her there, I suppose. So his death uh, kind of puts her further towards her path of getting out of there. And the fact is, he, you know, he takes a bite where she could have easily taken a bite. So it's kind of he's pushing her away as well. You know, kind of helping her leave. I don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into it. Yeah, we all, all days, and it's actually an interesting perspective. It's uh, it, it isn't it, it isn't one it isn't one that I, I I made myself, and yeah, and, and I certainly d- I don't think I'd have um, I I I would have read that much into it. It's certainly it's something to think about, though. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Plus, he completes his arc. He learns the names of all the reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, what more has he got to give? I would, I would have said the stereotype would have been that he would have went out in the end to save the hero, you know, sort of getting off in a, a shopping centre. Just doesn't do it, you know. Yeah, and then uh, Chris and Lisa, I suppose they die together, which is nice for them. Maybe um, one doesn't get to live without the other, so you know that's that's something, I suppose. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I. Yeah, I, 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 I certainly took that as as being completely, completely deliberate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Things like and and even and even 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 as as zombies like like they're they're kind of like they're 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 left they're left like with like with with, with, with each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's like being together in death. Yeah, holding hands almost. I mean, I'm pretty sure they accidentally brushed against each other, and it looks like they were holding hands. But you know, there was that. That was clearly the. The thing they were going for. Um, but could you imagine if one of them had survived? You'd just have to listen to the other one complain <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> it's like I think if one of them had died and one of them hadn't, they would have kept the other on a leash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like sedate them in the back of the car or something. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all lost people. Who cares? And I know you left your phone behind. Who cares? Hmm. That's that's just cruel. Those people die. But, but, you know they're not real. They are actors. I can confirm after having met them that they did indeed survive the making of this one. <laughs> yeah, as well. Oh, it's good to be to be reassured of these things. It really is. Uh, I like to remember that fiction is fiction. Sometimes it's easy to forget. Um, otherwise, I might start thinking I've got superpowers or something, which I don't. At least for now. Uh, the most moving death was um, no, you do see him die. You do see him die. Her dad. Um, once she saves him, turns out he's been bitten, which kind of renders the whole thing a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> but they, uh, but they do get to say goodbye, and he gives her his blessing to go off into the world and make her own mark on it. Now that it's overrun with zombies and there are no other opportunities. 
Yeah, now that air travel's pretty much out of the question, you can you can go as far as the eye can see. <laughs> yeah, you can go as far as that tank of gas in the car will take you. Because all the other petrol stations that have been readied are blown up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something to think about. But no, I, I like their sort of final scene together. Um, it's hilarious when he said, "I'm not crazy about your boyfriend." And it's like he's not my, he's not my boyfriend. And somehow Nick survives. Despite the fact that you think he's going to die. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the the way that scene was done, I was like, I, I was, I was, I was pretty certain he was, he was gonna, he was gonna, gonna crop up again, again later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because, because it, it is, because it, it is like a, a general rule in films like this is that. Yeah, so if, if if you don't if you don't actually actually see somebody die, then 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 they're 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 going to reappear later. Yeah. In which he does, like five minutes later. Um. So, any thoughts on uh, is it Tony? Character's name is his death. Uh. Yeah. Well. Yeah, well actually. Uh. Uh. uh Nothing really much more than 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 what you said about it. Like, yeah, yeah, like it is is, is like a, a very a very sad and um, put and put point poignant moment. Um, yeah, 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 and 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 also and also like a, and also a, a bit a bit, of an, a bit of an extension about about what you were saying earlier about uh, about uh, about Anna, Anna needing to uh, needing to 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 get to get away from him to live her own life. It's just just like a very very extreme interpretation of that. Yeah. Now onto the fun part, the songs, and we're going to have a sing. No, we're not. No, this, no this we're isn't not. the music. Line, so <laughs> we're definitely not. <laughs> we're not prepared. Uh, yeah. Um, the songs. So, do they tie into the themes well? Is the first question that I had. I would say that they do. Every song sort of complements how the characters are feeling at that given moment. The first one. Um, breakaways, you know, about, yeah, we're stuck, um, sick of this town, one out, um, perfectly encapsulates that kind of, that opening sequence of, this place sucks, you know, that's, that's very much the, the thought on everyone's mind at that point. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm, I'm, um, I, I, I feel the same uh, about that. Uh, yeah, 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 and, and yeah, and uh, just, and, and as as well as as well as um of as uh, establishing the establishing the the tone and, and the character's feelings, I also just thought it, it was just in of itself. It's actually a really really good song. Um, oh yeah, it's a, it's a nice little pop song. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, as I remember, like when uh, when when it was when it was. When it was uh, when I was writing my my my, my, my review of the film uh, in in in, um, in in June after seeing the festival, like, like the, the the only the only, refer- the only reference I made to it was uh, it w- was um, was was just uh, was what was it? It, it? It's obviously the character's frustrations, like with with living with living in a small town. Yeah, because that was just like pretty, pretty, pretty much what, what I took from it, and, and, and all I could all I could. Re- or I could recall from it at, at, at the moment, uh, but, but, but then when actually listening listening to it again, I actually thought, actually, this is really really good. I really like this. Yeah, um, and all the songs sound like they belong to the film, which sounds stupid, but everyone gushes about Frozen, right? And I feel like Frozen is a collection of songs that Disney just had lying around. They decided to put in a film because I don't think any of them really sound like they they bounce off any of the others. Um, and I think a good musical it has to have a kind of musical through line. I mean, look at one of my favourite musicals, the Buffy musical. You know, all <laughs> the songs sound like they belong. Moana, which is one of my favourite recent Disney films, all the songs sound like part of the same film. Yeah. Uh, the Greatest Showman, which is another film that I really like, all the songs sound like they fit, etc. Uh, as well as feeling like they fit, and and, and that. The, like, the 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 songs of of a good of a good musical like, like should should also also feel uh, uh, part part of the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, and yes, and, and and they should they should convey uh, convey thoughts and feelings that um like the 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 the, the, the aren't, aren't other other otherwise expressed. 
Yeah, this I, one does that better than the fish rap. <laughs> w R A P because of course it is. <laughs> you know, I had actually completely forgotten about about that one until until the second time round. <laughs> <laughs> when you get fish, of course, it is wrapped. So there you go. You know, when you get fish and chips, that's, there we go. That's, that's and exactly. Chris understands right. the joke. Everybody. I get the joke. I get the joke. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just thought, like, God, how could I have forgotten this? This is everything. Mother flipper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's it's the kind of thing that I. Like, like, like that, that, that you can, they can imagine, imagine the, like the, the songwriters just absolutely like laughing and laughing to themselves hysterically while writing it. <laughs> and it's only a couple of lines. It's only like thirty nine seconds long. I, I kind of wish that, that maybe there's a full version of lyrics out there somewhere. Surely they didn't only download that portion. Sorry, well, they didn't only write that portion. It's only thirty nine seconds. So maybe that's all it is. No, give me a full version. <laughs> We demand a full version. Yeah. But I think all the songs fit fit in, with the exception of one, which I'll explain shortly. Um, the the Hollywood ending one, which is, you know, the one that the, a lyric video... Was it a lyric video? A it video was, video, yes. Yeah, ...appeared online before the film was released. And that's like... Well, one thing that it does is it establishes that this isn't really going to be like that kind of traditional Hollywood story, you know. The relationships don't go that way, and um, and I like how all the characters are kind of frustrated that they're not going to get like a happy ending uh, in the way that has been teased in the films. You know, the uh, John sings about <laughs> how life is nee Disney, which is <laughs> perfect, just absolutely perfect. These two words don't rhyme. Now they do. Now they do. I, I was going to mention that as one of my favourite lines. Yes, <laughs> um, yeah, like, 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 we're Scottish. We can, we can make this rhyme. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah if it doesn't rhyme. We'll make sure it does. So brilliant. Well done, John. Well done, writer of song. Excellent work. Um, but the the imagery that surrounds that, the lyrics as well. So what you've got is you've got. You know, as as they're establishing it, you've got people wandering around looking miserable, and then you've got it's like a dinner lady looking at a teacher. Uh, you know, to that would be her Hollywood ending, I suppose. Uh, and then you've got a it's like a guy looking at another guy as well. <laughs> it's like really, you know, it's these little background details of yeah, no no one here is going to get what they want at all ever, and that's that's what the song's about, I suppose. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, 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 and and it also it also has has uh, so, uh, some some of, some of the most ela- most elaborate dance dance choreography seen throughout the film. It does, yeah. which, which I I absolutely loved. Um, yeah, and uh, and uh, yeah, 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 and and uh, 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 that. And uh, that 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 was that was actually uh, uh, what, one one of the things that, that I was that I was I was talking talking to to the director about um, it was it was, it was uh, asking asking him like, like how complicated that that all, all was to shoot. Um, yeah, 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 the, 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 the thought, the, 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 he he mentioned that it actually pretty much uh, went 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 off with it, uh, went off without without a hitch, but. Uh, but uh, because uh, because because all, all of the all the props on on, on the tables like were like, um, were, uh, were were in, were were incorporated in, in, into the into the routines of 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 the, of the background dancers. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. 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 So yeah. So yeah. So 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 they they, they were they were they were, all, so they were always, always like uh, pick, uh, pick, pick, uh, picking picking up and 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 re, and, re, and resetting things at each, <laughs> each, each each time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes, like uh, so, so much so that I like, like the, that that the members of the crew whose job it was to actually do that were standing around bored because they, they didn't have to do anything. Didn't have to do nothing. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, yeah, it's it's a really well choreographed scene. It, it gives you a bit of insight into all the characters, the you know what they're they're after at that point, or at least all the characters are singing. Um, you know, John's pining after Anna. Anna's saying, "I'm not a traditional heroine, so don't expect me to be." Um, 
the, the headmaster guy, he's, he's, he's there. I can't remember what his lines really are, but... I'm yeah, still yeah. evil. <laughs> yeah, 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 well, yeah, well, all the, all the, it, all the, it, it's not really the same thing, like, it's more just, like, it's more just, uh, uh, singing, 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 like, like, the, like, the repeated line, line of the chorus, but, yeah, but he's yeah. just, but, he, yeah, but he's just, he's just, he's gl- gl- glaring at everyone evilly while doing it, just, yeah. as if just thinking, like, I hate you all. Yeah. And then you have the, the Chris and Lisa portion here, the only people living that Hollywood romance uh, out of all of them, really, or at least they think they are. So they, they have their little bragging rights in the middle of it, which is, again, kind of insufferable. But that's kind of the point. <laughs> like, look at us flaunting our love in front of all you losers. Yeah, yeah it's like, it's like we, we, we're, 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 so, we're so blissfully happy with each other. It's, 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 everything will be everything will be incredible and amazing for us. Yeah. Be jealous. No point. <laughs> Spoiler alert: you die. <laughs> I'm sure they're lovely people. They're just insufferable. The actors are nice. <laughs> I say, having met them, of course. Yeah. I'm just going to keep saying that until. People find me insufferable. It should be any time in the last half hour or so. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 well, well uh, pa- apparently this this is this is the bragging rights episode. Of course it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. time. Yeah, so so you yeah, so you yeah, yeah, uh, may as well go all the way. Yep. Um. So when I talked about one song that doesn't really fit, but I think that's intentional because it is a song that's meant to be sung. If that makes sense. You know the. Um, Lisa's uh, suggestive <laughs> song. Hmm. Um, but you know, it doesn't like it doesn't really tell you what her mindset is. It doesn't tie into any of the major themes that are going on. It's just a song. It's in you know a point in the film uh, that she sings. But it's as part of a talent show, so I don't think it's supposed to be that kind of song. Brazilian no, I, I don't. I don't think it was intended. I mean, it was intended as like a, a, a silly performance thing, wasn't it? A bit like the the fish rap thing. It's not meant to be sort of integral to the to the plot at all. It's just a song that's being performed. But it was hilarious. Yes. Uh, I love the guy in the audience who just it suddenly dawns on him <laughs> what's going on, and, and he's also confused, also confused. <laughs> Because she is a teenager, and he's presumably an adult, so it's a bit like, mm, what am I feeling here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and also, like, what can I get away with feeling? Yeah, and then the, you've got the, the the half-naked dancers. Where did you get them? <laughs> <laughs> so many questions. But, it, you know, it's funny. It, it's a funny number in the... I don't know, it's about the only Christmas song in the film other than the credits one. Other than stuff in the background or various tunes that sound vaguely. Yeah, actually. Um, Other ones, like Turning My Life Around, which you alluded to earlier, was about the, you know, it's the Shaun of the Dead scene where she's singing about life ain't so bad, it's going to get better. Uh, Which has some pretty bad dancing in it, which I kind of approve of. Good song. It does sound a little bit similar to um, Breakaway, though, at the start. A little bit. A l- almost a little too similar. Right, I, I, I didn't get that, actually. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, well. Just me, then. I've listened to the soundtrack a lot <laughs> after spending money on it. Yep, yeah, well, it's certainly worth money. Yeah, it was uh, a, you know, it's good fun. I think the the video or music video side of it is really funny because you've got the, as I said, the bad dancing, the chaos going on in the background, uh, with the optimistic, sunny lyrics. What are your sort of favourite songs out of them, or least favourites? I suppose that's the um, big question. Uh, favourites because it is just so sugary musical nonsense is a Hollywood ending, I think. I. Also for that Disney Disney line, I've got to, I've got to throw that one in. Um, least favorite song, 
Uh, I, um, I'm saying it's difficult to pick a least favourite. I'm going to go for Soldier at War. Um, as my least favourite. I've, I'm not like you, I've not managed to see the film a couple of times. I've only seen the film once. That's the one that released his music video. Oh, was it? Ah, right, okay. But yeah, that's, that's the one I'm going for. I would say it has to grow on you, that song, actually. Mm. I like it now, but I can't remember loving it at the time. Uh, I like Hollywood Ending as well, I think that's my favourite. I also like Human Voice, because I think that comes at a point in the film where it represents so much for the characters, mm. and you know, the they have no way of contacting their loved ones and they just want to hear a human voice. That's what the song's about. But it also has this kind of commentary on how obsessed they are with technology and being connected to everybody and, you know, social media and all that stuff. So it's, you know, it's got a bit of that in there, but ultimately it's the, we're so detached, um, let, let me make sure my family are safe and things like that. I think that's, it's quite a meaningful song. You know, a sort of middle of the film ballad type. Uh, my least favourite song is the villain song, mostly because Paul Kay's voice is quite grating when he's singing. Hmm. Andrew, what about you? Yeah, yeah okay, well, all that, uh, well as, I, as I as mentioned earlier, I, I, I uh, really, really, really liked Break Away as, as a song. Uh, is it, uh, uh, just because... because it's because uh, I think I think uh, I think, uh, I think that, uh, lyrically it's 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 very, it's uh, uh, very, very very well constructed, and yeah, and and the and the 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 performances of it are 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 are, 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 are sung uh, very, uh, very 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 powerfully, which uh, which which uh, really 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 shows the intensity of of, of what they're feeling. Um, yeah, and 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 another 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 one I quite quite like was uh, was was the was the the one one at the, one, uh, the, uh, the climax uh, like uh, give uh, give 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 them a show, um yeah, we, yeah, we, which is what one the one the uh, one the one the one that Anna, Anna sings like as um as as um as she as she's slaughtering like an army of zombies to to make her way to her dad, which um yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I just, I just thought that, that was absolutely, absolutely brilliant, uh, 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 brilliant, brilliant scene in the film, and 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 that, and that certainly brings bring, bring back memories of it. Yeah, Hobby slaughtering his choreography. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I really, I really, I really, uh, really wasn't, really wasn't, wasn't that, wasn't that taken, taken with, with Soldier at War. Uh, either it's just because, it's just because as, as an extension of like my, my dislike of Nick's arrogance. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's basically, all, all, I'm amazing, I'm the greatest hard man, I'm gonna save, save you all, you should all follow me, kind of bow, bow down mortals, kind of thing. Yeah, it just annoyed, annoyed me. Lyrics are cool. And I, and I like the, the choreography of it, like, you know, being carried over on trolleys and, and stuff like that. Plus the bit leading up to it where they're trying to, like, hide under a ball pit. <laughs> one of the stupidest survival ideas ever. Yeah, 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 yeah uh, which I think Steph actually explicitly states. <laughs> I think I've seen worse than The Walking Dead, so I think they're doing <laughs> <laughs> Well, have you seen worse than an old lady zombie pissing on... Head. Maybe not. Good point, well made. <laughs> plastic, it's warm plastic. <laughs> uh, it's so funny. Yeah, um, Soldier at War grew on me after a while. I do really like it though. Um, I think, yeah, I, I like the lyrics. I think it's well sung. I, I do think it, it grows on you. I, do, I think it lifts out of the the soundtrack in some ways, as it's a very different sort of song. It's, I guess it is more military based, you know, it's more militant and more action driven, which the other songs ne aren't necessarily. Um, just, my, just a thought on that one. And then you've got like the What a Time to Be Alive credit stuff, which is cool. And a Christmas one, Christmas and Nothing Without You, which appears at the end of the film. 
the animated end credits. So that's fun. Cement is a Christmas film. And this is essentially our backup Christmas podcast. So we should probably mention that earlier. If or, I maybe it's, or maybe it's our real Christmas podcast. If we Who don't knows? manage to have a real Christmas podcast, this is a real Christmas podcast. Who knows? There could be a zombie apocalypse, and then we don't get to record our real Christmas podcast. And wouldn't that be the greatest tragedy? It would. It'd be horrible. It'd be the end of civilization as we know. Which is a line from Jingle All the Way, another Christmas film. That I like. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to hear that podcast? Then it just was, you know, the only thing better than watching Jingle All The Way is hearing two people talk about Jingle All The Way. So on that note, uh, anything else to say on the songs before we wrap up? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think, I think we've covered everything I want to say about them. Cool. Anything else to say in general about the film, about Christmas, about Christmas? Nope. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, uh, uh, re- really, really just reiterating the fact that, that that the film is a whole hell of a lot of fun and everybody should seek it out as and when they can. Yeah, it's going to adorn my Christmas viewing tradition if I can get a hold of it within the next year, which I presume there'll be some form of release. No, definitely. I think this is one of these films that word of mouth will do it big favours because I've not met anyone that's seen it that's absolutely hated against it. The reviews that I've seen are pretty positive of it. Uh, so it's a word of mouth thing. Uh, if you get the chance, go and see it. Tell your friends about it. You'll love it. Indeed. I agree. And anything to say about Christmas? Because, you know, we have to connect it somehow. I've heard that this year it's taking place on the 25th of December. No way. Way. Uh, Andrew, anything, any Christmas message for the listeners? Um, yes, yeah, well, well, uh, just, uh, just, 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 just that every, everyone should should in, enjoy themselves, eat, eat and, eat and drink far, far too much, and just generally have a good time. Agreed. Everyone, eat, uh, drink, and be merry. Eat, drink, and be merry. Um, yeah, I like, um, I love this film. One thing I wanted to talk about, never found an organic place to put it, but I'm going to put it in anyway. You've got the Schrodinger's Christmas Star, which is a great a great little thing. You know, the, it almost uh, knocks someone off the stage earlier in the film, and it's used to knock Savage off the stage at the end of the film. So it's like, they set it up early on, waiting for, it, waiting for the star to drop towards the end. <laughs> You know, it's one of those things you sort of forget about it, and then as soon as it happens, you're like, "Oh yeah, that was a thing." Yeah, actually, I did forget about that. <laughs> Schrodinger's Christmas Star. They established that this thing can fall down, so therefore it does have to fall down at some point by, before the end of the film. And I think we've just got the subtitle for our podcast. Schrodinger's Christmas Star. Exactly. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's it. Love this film definitely see it if you can uh, hopefully it will get a DVD release or a Blu-ray release within the next year so that it can be taken home and enjoyed and, and loved uh, and adorn everyone's Christmas playlist it'll sit up there with Die Hard, Home Alone Jingle All The Way Muppets Christmas Carol and all the other ones that I watch at this time of year um, it's not a huge list, I don't have that much time but this is going on it, so there we go. And to all our listeners, I'd love to wish you a very Merry Christmas. And I hope that there'll be another podcast where we get to say it again. But if not, have a great time. Have a good one. Merry Christmas. So that was our discussion on Anna and the Apocalypse. Once again, on behalf of all of us here at Neil Before Blog and Neil Before Pod, I'd like to wish you all a very happy Christmas and all the best into the new year. If you like what you heard, then please give us the gift of hitting that subscribe button. iTunes users can leave us a present in the form of a star rating and comment if you can find it in your heart to do so. If you want to discuss this or anything else, then hit us up on Facebook or Twitter under Neil Before Blog or leave a comment on neilbeforeblog.co.uk. As always, we hope you'll join us on the next Neil Before Pod.